Hi, this is Leonel Castillo. I'm with the Small Farm Outreach Program, and I would just uh, like to say that I am very happy to be working with uh, For the Soil, and I am all for uh, soil conservation and, and hope that uh, uh, everybody follows our podcast. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of For the Soil, a conversation. I'm your host, Jeff Ishi. We'll be getting to our special guest on this episode, Virginia's Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, in just a few moments. But I want to remind everyone, first of all, about the website forthesoil.org, and that is the digit for thesoil.org. If you click on the blog link in the menu bar, you'll find a wealth of resources on soil health in our blog, including articles about erosion control, the co-benefits of soil health series, also about how diversity builds soil health, as well as community health. Numerous articles there in our blog entry at forthesoil.org. And while you're there, go ahead and take the pledge. You'll see the, the link at the top of the menu bar. Just click on that link, pledge, and commit yourself to improving the soil health in your own yard, on your own farm, in your own community. Let's now get to the show. Welcome, everyone, to For the Soil, a conversation. I'm your host, Jeff Ishi, and we have a very special guest lined up for you today, Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, Matt Lohr. All three of us, uh, Eric Benfelt with Virginia Cooperative Extension, Mary Sketch Bryant with Virginia Soil Health Coalition. We've all known Secretary Lohr for a number of years, and uh, welcome to the program, all of you. Great to be here, Jeff. Thank you. Mary, why don't you go ahead and do a more formal introduction, if you will? Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so great to have you here, Secretary Lohr. And Secretary Lohr is the new Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry. And prior to being the Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, he was the chief of the Natural Resources Conservation Service and previously served in the Virginia House of Delegates, as well as as the 14th Commissioner of the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and as a fifth-generation farmer in Rockingham County. So, so Trey Laura, I'll let you introduce yourself from there, but just, you know, would love to hear. I know soil health holds a special place in your heart in Virginia for many reasons, and, and hear a little bit more about your connection to that. Yeah, well, thank you, Mary, and Eric and Jeff. It's great to see you guys again um, as well, and it's an honor to have a chance to be with you today and share a little bit about soil health, and this is something that I really enjoy, and this is a topic that I, I really don't get a chance to, to spend a lot of time on, so I, I love having the opportunity just to dig in because it's one of my passions. Uh, as, as Mary said, I'm a fifth-generation farmer and really grew up alongside of my, my parents and my grandparents who were great stewards of the land, and they taught me early on the importance of taking care of the soil. And so on a personal level, we have been proponents of, of no-till farming and planting cover crops and crop rotation and grazing cover crops for many, many years. And that's uh, that's stuck with me. And in uh, the various positions that I've been honored to serve in, really understanding the importance of, of taking care of the soil. And certainly my time at, at NRCS gave me a tremendous opportunity to, to devote a lot of time and focus on being able to help our producers all across the country understand the benefits, not only environmentally, but financially as well. So it's an honor to be in this position now and to be able to just to highlight and promote the benefits of what soil health really means for our producers. And so Secretary Lohr, I also know that you've uh, have done a lot with agricultural literacy and agritourism and uh, school groups out to your farm. And what can we do to to educate the next generation and the general public about the importance of soil. Yeah, so, you know, it's really, it's twofold, Eric. I mean, there's a lot we can do to educate the general public about the importance of soil, but but there's, I guess, from my focus, there's a lot we can do even within our own industry about soil health, because, like, for example, when I was at NRCS and we had the EQIP program, Environmental Quality and Incentives program, you know, there were 
even at best we were funding or you know about 25 percent of the farms across the country were able to address this and so we think about where we are i think that there's still a lot of room for education amongst our farm folks and there's lots of reasons why you know producers maybe across the country haven't really bought into soil health. They don't understand the, the financial benefits or the environmental benefits, or it's, there's lots and lots of reasons why. But my job is to really try to put educational opportunities together for Virginia farmers, uh, field days and educational workshops where they can learn from soil health champions and farmers who have taken advantage of these good environmental practices. And so I think there's a lot that's been done, but there's a lot that we can do in the agricultural community. And certainly, you know, from the educational side of the general public as well, climate change is in all the, the, the conversation this day. And certainly we look at agriculture is really on the forefront. The, the work that we do protecting our soil is really having a great impact on reducing, um, um, you know, the global warming and climate change and sequestering carbon and all those things that are such positive stories. So there is a story to tell through the general public and there's a story that can be told for our producers across the state as well. Secretary Laura, one question I'd like to hear your comment on is, is uh, stream fencing and water purity, the Chesapeake Bay. For a number of years now, Virginia farmers have been actively participating in stream fencing programs, but from my understanding, we're not near where we need to be to improve the, the health of the Chesapeake Bay. But there seems to be a lot of controversy on that topic. What would you share with us about the, and I keep hearing the year 2025 as some kind of mandate year. Uh, what can you share in regard to stream fencing for livestock and, and what farmers should know now in 2022? So yes, uh, we are part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, and for many years, uh, you know, the the total maximum daily loads have been set for ag and forestry, and what that means is the amount of sediment that's coming into our, our waterways and the amount of uh, nutrients that are running off the land. And certainly, um, there's goals that that we have to meet for the ag community, and the the WIP three, the Watershed Implementation Plan. Uh, phase three is due in 2025. Uh, the magical part of that number is up until this point, everything has been voluntary. Farmers have been able to be incentivized through cost share programs to try to meet these benchmarks voluntarily. But in 2025, the focus shifts from being voluntary to mandatory. And that's, that's a big deal for the ag community. So our goal is to make sure that farmers know, A, the financial resources that are available because through state programs and through federal programs, there, there really are a lot of, of dollars available so that the farmer is not bearing the, the primary burden of stream fencing. It's complicated because a lot of our land in Virginia and across the country is rented. And so if I'm a, a, an 85 year old widow, for example, and I've got several hundred acres of farmland and I've got a stream through there, really, it, it may not be financially beneficial to me to, um, you know, to invest in something like that when it's, I'm nearing the end of my life and I don't know who the next generation is going to be. So there's some of those challenges that we have to, to work through. But to me, I think the thing to remember is that we're at a time now where there's a lot of money available that has not always been there. And there's lots of programs. And so I've been beginning discussions with our Secretary of Natural Resources and the various state agencies of, of DCR and our conservation districts and certainly NRCS of how we can come together and look at the dollars and the programs that are out there and, and design a plan that'll be the most beneficial to reach, to reach these goals. Secretary Lohr, you, you're in an interesting position that you have worked at the national level in a leadership position as well as the state level and being a farmer yourself. Where, where does Virginia stand in comparison to other states with soil health? Um, how, how are we doing? I, you know, we hear a lot about the diversity of agriculture in the state. Um, is, is that a benefit when it comes to soil health? Are we, are we doing well? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I would say, yes, we're doing well, but we can always do better. And we have some things that make us unique where we're located in, in the mid-Atlantic region, which is, is really good, for example, for planting cover crops. Because in many parts of the country, in the Dakotas or Minnesota or very far north, the growing season so short, planting cover crops following a, a harvest is more difficult. But we live in a part of the country where really um, that's, that's not as much of a problem. So I think that that certainly is an advantage to us. We've been blessed, Virginia, as a state through the Water Quality Improvement Fund has, has been generous with funds for, for several years to provide cost share dollars. So those funding opportunities are out there. And so I think all in all, we're, we're doing well. But um, as uh, I think one of you said, you know, with the, the Chesapeake Bay goals that are coming up, we still have a ways to go. And I think certainly a big priority of us is how we can continue to make that progress and help our producers see the benefits of, of soil health and what that means. Uh, very quickly, I'll mention there's a lot of big grants that are out there from mostly the federal government that are going to start compensating farmers for improving soil health, primarily planting cover crops. I think those are really going to help move the needle as well because cover crops are a great tool for improving soil health, but they can be pretty expensive. So I think as we dig into some of these programs uh, through USDA and others, I think that's going to help move the needle even more. And Secretary Laura, we, are, we also face a challenge with the rising age of the farm population being 58, almost 60 years old. And I know you're a proponent of uh, farmland preservation and uh, farm transition planning. Where does soil health sort of fit into that mix? Absolutely. I'm a huge believer in, in conservation easements and certainly on our farm, uh, we have our entire operation placed under permanent easements, which mean the land can never be developed. But certainly, uh, you know, soil health is going to be so important for a farm, whereas uh, if, if a land is converted to some type of development and housing and subdivision, um, you know, pavement does not does not bode well for the environment, right? And so having a good healthy soil is able to sequester carbon and reduce runoff and all of those things that are so beneficial to the environment and to the agricultural industry. So being able to, to keep our open spaces open and to keep our farms as farms is very important. And again, it's one of the things that a lot of producers out there don't really understand the financial benefits of conservation easements. And so being able to, to make sure that the education component is taking place and, and the funds that are available are very beneficial to that as well. Just about three or four minutes remaining in this episode of For the Soil, a conversation. Our special guest on this episode is Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, Matt Lohr. And Secretary Lohr, one final question from me at least is, I'd like to hear more about your farm. I've been to your farm on a couple of occasions. Matter of fact, I purchased sweet corn from you a number of years ago, but you've grown pumpkins, you grow sweet corn. Tell us more about the farming operation. Yeah, well, thank you. So it's 250 acres and we're located about 10 miles north of Harrisonburg in Rockingham County. And uh, it's, it's my happy place. I work in Richmond through the week, but I can't wait to get back home on the farm. But we, uh, we raise about three quarters of a million broilers each year for Pilgrim's Pride. We purchase 200 head of feeder cattle uh, right here in the spring, and we'll graze them all summer until, uh, until fall when they'll be uh, shipped uh, out to the Midwest to the feedlots. And then we have about 100 acres of corn soybean rotation and about 125 acres of pasture where we graze and make some hay. So that's the operation. In the past, we've done 20 acres of sweet corn, although in this position, um, we're going to have to let that go for a few years because it's, it's a lot of work and I'm not there. And then in the past, we've done uh, the U-Pick pumpkins and the corn mazes and done a lot of the agritourism as well, which, again, are wonderful opportunities. But uh, you, I really need to be there full time farming in order to see those enterprises succeed. So uh, we're kind of taking a break on some of that. My neighbor is leasing out my poultry right now. And so my dad is helping with the feeder cattle and I've got a local uh, local company that helps me planting and spraying and harvesting the crops. So uh, I love the farm, but it's so much to do. I have to focus on this job right now and kind of farming where, where I can. And one last question from me, Secretary Lohr. We, you know, you have been a mentor for so many, but wondering, you know, who some of your mentors specifically around soil health, agricultural preservation, and if there's any resources that you would suggest. 
That is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, when I was chief at NRCS, one of the true highlights was for me to be able to travel the country and visit those soil health champions. And I, you know, from the Dakotas to Ohio, all across the country, being able to go out on the farm and see practices that farmers have been doing for 25 and 30 years, especially as it relates to, to cover crops and planting green and reducing herbicides and pesticides and being able to save money on those inputs. It's been very, very exciting to see. So I would say at the, the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service website, uh, soil health is one of the main focuses and they have a soil health champions page where folks can go on and actually take virtual tours of farms and see practices in person. But again, uh, the best part about serving as chief was that chance to get out across the country and get on farms and see firsthand and hear the passion and see how successful they have become and then being able to see them share that passion with their neighbors so that they could continue to see uh, that soil health uh, community grow. And Secretary Laura, I have a last question is, uh, what advice or counsel would you have for a younger generation or people that want to get involved with agriculture and the care of soil and land. Yeah, that, absolutely. So, you know, there's so many resources out there. Don't try to do it alone. And certainly uh, going through the Cooperative Extension Service, there's experts, as you know, Eric, are there to help. Certainly your, your local NRCS offices all across the, the state and all across the country, our local soil and water conservation districts. There are experts out there that will come out to your farm and walk the land and see what the resource concerns are. If you need to put a conservation plan together, match you up with cost share dollars. Uh, don't think that you have to do it alone. Uh, through Extension and through NRCS and our conservation districts, there are lots of resources through the Department of Agriculture. So um, yes, make sure you're not alone and try to find a mentor, some farmer that you know or can see that's doing things right. Uh, I think they're, they'll be willing to give you some advice to help you get started. Well, unfortunately, our time is up on this episode of For the Soil, a conversation. Mary Sketch Bryant with the Virginia Soil Health Coalition, Eric Benfelt with Community Viability, Virginia Cooperative Extension, and Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, Matt Lohr. Thank you all three for being on this episode of For the Soil, a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jeff. Perry Lohr. Well, today we hear from Dr. Rory McGuire at Virginia Tech on one of the four core principles of soil health. Yes, minimize soil disturbance is one of the first things that uh, we worked out when we were looking at conserving soils. Uh, after the Dust Bowl, the Dust Bowl was caused by drought, but also caused by uh, the mold board plow disturbing and destroying soil structure. So when you disturb the soil, you just dis uh, destroy soil structure and you also burn off organic matter. So minimizing soil disturbance by practices such as no-till, um, you help build soil structure. When you have good soil structure, uh, water drains properly. You don't have problems with compaction. If you have compactions, your roots can't grow through the soil. Minimizing soil disturbance uh, by, by not mold board plowing, uh, doing conservation till or no-till is extremely important. Dr. Rory McGuire at Virginia Tech. For the Soil, a conversation is made possible with funding support from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and the Agua Fund. Other partners include the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service, Virginia Cooperative Extension, Virginia State University, Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, and partners of the Virginia Soil Health Coalition. Views expressed on this podcast are those of each individual guest. To download a copy of this or any other episode, visit the website forthesoil.org. And if you should have a specific question about soil health, just call your local Extension office, your local USDA service center, or contact the Soil and Water Conservation District office. Music used during today's program was provided courtesy of Jackson F. Smith, and Pottington Bear. All rights reserved. For the Soil, a conversation is produced by On the Farm Radio in collaboration with Virginia Tech. I'm your host, Jeff Ishing. <laughs>